fight her. Oh, oh big oh. right hand. One punch. That is it. Forget about the count. It is over. Hi everyone, I'm Sasha from Women's Fight News. And I'm Boxing Madness from Twitter. And we've got uh, Tasha Jonas, Miss GB, joining us today. Tasha, thanks for joining us. No, you're welcome. Anytime. Have you been busy today? Have you been training? Twice. Uh, been with Joe, doing obviously the boxing stuff and done a bit of cardio running before. So oh. I'm just chilling now. I've just ate me, me salmon. Back on my diet, I feel like a new woman. <laughs> <laughs> and because I know you're always in the gym training, and I always find it amazing that you know. So I think a bit of boxing culture can be when you don't have a fight date, people can let themselves go. Definitely don't train as hard. Don't keep weight. I think you're the complete opposite to that. I think you always look fight ready somehow. How Ooh, on earth? I don't, I don't know if the scales would agree. But <laughs> you look always, very I'm, close to it at least. <laughs> I mean, we come from a, like an amateur background where we've been on GB and at, G, at GB, you like never get any rest. So like there's no off season. You're constantly training to be trying to be the person selected to go to the next tournament. So to, to be in the gym and being active is something I'm quite used to. Mm. Um, and also there's kind of a, a culture within Gallagher's gym, you know, that we whatever we do, we don't. We always tick along, if you know what I mean. So mm. if a fight date does come, especially in times like there is now where anybody can get injured, anyone can fail a test. And like you just got to make sure that you're ready. And as I'm someone who's waiting for a fight date, then I'm just going to keep yourself ready just in case. Yeah, definitely. Because all your fighters at, at Joe's are constantly ready. You're all always training, aren't you? And, and listen to a podcast with Joe Gallagher. And he said that's kind of like the ethos in his gym because like, I think he'd said something like, if you know, you had a regular job, you only have like up to six weeks off a year. If you're a boxer and you're only, you know, boxing maybe two fights a year, what are you doing for the other, you know, 20, 30 weeks of the year? No, that's that's right. And and like I, I think people appreciate it now because the gyms are closed, but people don't realise how social being in a gym is. You know, uh, you've got a few boxers that like to train by themselves and do their own thing, and it's just them and the coach. Um, Gallagher's is not that kind of gym. Like we we go in, you know, we we all train at different times and there's stammered times and stuff. But it's like that social aspect of you know, you go in the gym, you see people, you like you're training against people, competing against people until the end of the session. And then you know, that's just the way it is, and that's what I've always done, and that's what I've always been used to, and I think. Um, yeah, it's just it 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 is just uh, for me personally. That's the best best way to be. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I find it really. I mean, boxing for me is is the most wonderful sport in the world. But it's between two people that are obviously going out there to give the very very best to win. But do you feel, Tasha, that sometimes when you when you're training and and you're not actually judged on all the training, are you? you're just judged on that one particular fight for that night, aren't you? No one sees the actual hard work that goes through what you've actually got through to get there, sort of thing. No, I, I, I think I've mentioned this in, in like on my social media posts before. Like you are always judged off just what people see, and you know that that's not their fault. But you know, my example was, you know, especially when the Olympics was pushed back. Imagine, imagine being a you know a sprinter. You when you sign up to the Olympics, especially for a UK athlete, you sign up to to be there for four years so that's four years for that one you know moment and obviously there's different rounds and whatever but you know it's over in 10 seconds and 
you've trained four years plus the, the, the years before that to, to to even get to that moment and then people have an opinion for me based on the 20 minutes that I'm in the ring but they don't see that this is something I've put my life and soul into for like 15 years coming up to 16 so you know it, it is exactly that and there's it, it's hard to put that into context to people who only just see the fights do you know what I mean obviously mm. there's a few networks now that do like you know before the ropes and you can see a bit of the training and people can see it now because we use social media to put it out but you don't appreciate how how tough that is and and I say to the kids all the time when I go to schools I'm not the best boxer I'm just the one that's stuck with it the longest mm. and you know that life isn't for everybody to be knocked down and pick yourself back up and, you know, to keep going in and out of ups and downs and, you know, blood, sweat and tears. That life isn't for everybody because it's so hard. And, yeah, we the ones that you see at the end of the day are just the ones that stuck with it. But there is, you know, I, I honestly believe there's a kid somewhere faster than Usain Bolt, but... <laughs> They just didn't have that in them to keep going back and keep going back and, you know, get told no and get knocked down and get back up. And that's that's the way it is, that we're just the ones that have stuck with it. Yeah. And I also, yeah. you also see a lot now, don't you? I mean, I'm generally on, on social media quite a lot and I'm, and to be honest with you, I took a little leaf out of your book a lot of the times because I used to get myself involved in a bit of, you know, a few arguments on certain things and stuff. And now, when I look at some of the stuff that boxers in general have to put up with on, on their tweets, I, I generally see this sort of thing, oh, he's no good, he can't do this, he can't do that. But I don't think they actually appreciate, that, like what we've just been saying, how hard it is just, just to be to come to that level. You know, I see boxers, well, I used to see a boxer every month, and, and Tasha, believe you me, some of them, they were going in with injuries and still working and, and trying hard, you know, to get to where they want to be. And it's just total dedication, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And I mean, it's not everybody, but fans can be so fickle. I think sometimes the pressure from the promoter building building you up yeah. can also be your downfall because you, you build you up to be something. And then, you, you know, one loss in boxing. I mean, how many people come out with an unbeaten record? There's very, very few. Everyone everyone would love to be a, a Carl Zaghi or a Mayweather, but the actual chances of that happening are very, very slim. The greatest it, of boxers of all time have been yeah. beaten. So, um, but you have this thing of this pressure of this, oh, and then you lose it. And then people are like, oh, they're not as good as they thought he, he was. And some of the things that I've been called, being said about me being a woman, a mom, me race, all things. It's like, it, 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 it's ridiculous, yeah. but then you win and they, they say like, oh, you're great, or we didn't think that you could do that. You know, a, a lot of people are like turning it back on its head. I'm just, it's just a, it's just a crazy world that, uh, you know, everyone's got an opinion and entitled to opinion. I, I agree with that, but you know, if, you, if you're going to be defamatory or, you know, negative, I don't know why you would want to put it out there. Yeah. Mm. Because you had a loss, didn't you, a few years ago? And like you say, it's certainly not the end of the world. Like, you know, if you look at every other sport, you know, no one's unbeaten. You know, it's that thing in boxing, isn't it, where, you know, you've got to be unbeaten. It's even like UFC, you know, the world's best have lost four, five, six times. And when you then had that fight with Terry Harper, the build up to that, you were just writ off straight away. Like, and I couldn't believe it. I think even like, you know, you look at the odds with the bookies and what people were saying, you were just completely writ off as if, you know, you weren't an XGB, didn't go to the Olympics, you'd had tons of other wins and you had one loss a few years back, which probably was just a bad day at the office, which is going to happen to everyone. How, in a way, smug was you? I know you only got the draw. But that was controversial. Controversial. How smug was you at the end of that fight with Terry Harper, where you just <laughs> proved everyone wrong? Uh, there was a, a point on, um, especially Twitter, that every time Sky put something off, they were like, "She's too old. She's sad a day. She's done this. She's done that." And I went through and I liked every single comment. Because <laughs> so I thought, when this when this fight's over, I'm going to message every single one of you. <laughs> so. <laughs> I, like, I went through, I liked them all as they were saying them, I was liking it, I was liking it and they must have thought either I was being funny or like, she's a weirdo so 
I thought, I thought, right, when this fight is over, I'm telling you now I'm going to reply. Like, I sat there and I was like, I, I wouldn't like anything else on my feed because I would want I wanted these to be at the top <laughs> of, so I could reply. So then, um, obviously, the fight happened. And, look, and good enough, a fair few of them, like, messaged me back and saying, look, we didn't have that. We didn't have you down for that. Like, we was didn't think you'd add it in yet. Like, and I thought, you know what, that... That suits me. That's that's fair enough. Yeah. So I didn't reply to anyone, but I thought, you know, I did do it to, to reply. <laughs> I like he hadn't pushed me buttons because of I, I'm like social media, social media. Like I say, everyone's yeah. got an opinion, so I just let it fly over me. I didn't used to annoy me, but now I just I just like half laugh at it. Um, but that time it did. Sorry. No, it's, so I'll carry on. My apologies, sorry. Oh, no, no, it was just that. That's what it, it, it got to me going a little bit. So fight, fight. Going into that fight, I mean, I, I'm on, and I used to, me, I'm absolutely looking through social media, and, and, and nobody really were generally giving you a chance. I mean, obviously, you know, as the build-up went on, I think Steffi said a few things that were a little bit um, to the bone in, in terms of you can't fight at the weight, you, you can't do this, you can't do that. And I thought to myself, the pressure that he's putting on his, his fighter um, must be absolutely horrendous <laughs> to be saying stuff like that because I knew in my heart of hearts that that wasn't ever going to be the case, you know. And I, it was just so good to see you actually come out of there. Well, I thought you won. I thought you had won two or, two or three rounds up. Um, but one question I want to ask is, <laughs> is, one question I've got to ask is, when you went into that fight, was there a rematch clause? In terms of if you would have won, there wasn't. They Scott uh, Matchroom had messaged me. Um, that obviously the deal had been signed and been ready for for months, and they'd messaged me uh, the week before we was used to fight, or it might have been two weeks before, and said, "Oh, we forgot to put a rematch clause in." <laughs> um, so when I spoke to MTK, MT, it was sorry. Matchroom had messaged MTK, MTK had messaged me. So obviously my go, uh, go-to go person is Tom. So Tom Stalker messaged me and was like, look, Matchroom have got this um, this um, rematch clause that they forgot to put in the contract. They want you to sign it and send it back. And I went, what? <laughs> and they were like, has he got a rematch clause? I said, I know why they've, 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 they've sent you that. I said, because they've probably been speaking to the people that have been sparring. They've been yeah. speaking to, you know, the lads in the gym. They've been speaking to whoever and, you know, they've probably said, oh, she's training really well. So now they've backtracked a little bit because they thought, I genuinely believe that they thought I was a good name for Terry Harper to have on on, on her record, like Eva Volstrom, like Obanoff. So I said to Tom, I'm not, I'm not saying that. They, they, don't, they, they, they thought she was gonna, she's going to walk over me and now they're backtracking a little bit. So we'll see. Yeah. And, and so Tom was like, no, it, that's fine. It's up to you. It's up to you. What, what do you want to do? I said, no, I'm not signing it. And then obviously that happened, so I was good. <laughs> yeah, and the, the other question would be is, if you, you know, for me, as I say, we, we all probably, most of Twitter and, and, and social media believe you've won that. But if you would have won that fight in the way that what happened and you'd have seen the backlash on social media, would you have would you have gone to, to your management and said, look, I've got to give her this rematch because if I do, it looks as if I'm walking away from this and I'm a champion, so I'll fight whoever I have to. Do you know where I'm coming from a little bit, Tasha? Yeah, no, I, I, I listen, I, I wasn't, the, I wouldn't have been the champion going in there. So when I came out and I was the champion, it probably would have only been right to do that. Um, obviously, I don't have control of, 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 of everything, you know, we, we, we've got to sit down as a team and, and, and consider what's the best route for me. If I thought I could possibly get beaten, then maybe I'd, 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 I'd go another route. Or if I thought yeah. there was easier fights out there for me to have, maybe I'd go another route, which, like, I, you, you can't you can't blame people for doing that. Um, but, you know, if I had seen, if I'd have seen it, yeah, probably, probably. Mm. But I, I don't want to say, oh, yeah, definitely, because... You know, just that yeah, I, I, can't, I can't say because I'm not in that position, but I understand decisions that have been made, you know, since then. Mm -hmm. I, I do get it looking at, at the bigger view. Obviously, it doesn't work for me as 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 me wanting to be the challenger, but 
I, I do get it as, you know, looking after their boxes. I, I get that. Because mm. in a way, I think you've created a problem for yourself because you were so good on that night. I know, I think, I don't know if you went on to say it wasn't you at your best still, but I thought you were unbelievable that night. Everyone thinks you've got the win. So you're possibly now going to be avoided because champions aren't going to want to fight you because there's just such a high risk of losing. So do you feel like now you're going to be such an avoided fighter and you're going to struggle? Um, probably at super featherweight, yeah. Because mm. I think there's a lot of risk, like you say, for, for not much yeah. reward. Um, I, it's not like I've got a belt or anything, so if they're not fighting me for something, it's potentially me taking what you've got away. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I do. You can sometimes be a victim of your own success in boxing. Um, but, again, I've just got to, you know, put myself in the positions where it, I, I'm unavoidable. You know, mm -hmm. we've talked a lot about how important taking your mandatories are. So, OK, well, when I put myself in a mandatory position, we'll see how important they are then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you're Twitter, quite... Sorry, I was on Twitter trying to get the uh, French um, mandatory to... I tweeted her the other day and I said, fight Tasha. Because, <laughs> you know, and she said she sent me a tweet back, you know, in fairness to her, and she said, after I'm champion... Oh yeah, they're not gonna. Yeah, they're not. Gonna give you, they're not gonna give you a fight when they've got a, a, a world title coming up either early. You know, you're too no, dangerous. If, if they've got themselves in that position, I un I do understand. I'm, I'm not stupid. It doesn't it doesn't save my cause and it doesn't help me. But I do understand. No. It's boxing's. You know what people see. I've said this before as well. What people see is the sport, <laughs> but what we are in is the business because the business and the sport are yeah. two different things. Mm. Yeah, and for you, you're quite flexible with your weight, aren't you? You can move up and down a little bit, can't you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a greedy kid, to be honest. <laughs> the less <laughs> weight I have to get off, the better for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anything from one one thirty to one forty, that's me being comfortable. That's you know, mm. I, I'm a, I'm at a good I'm in a good place. You know, mm. obviously one forty is ten pounds that I, I usually do don't have to lose 135 yeah. is an extra five pounds for me so it, it is it is what it is and I th you know I think I, I'm not a small uh, super feather you know I'm, I'm, I'm quite average or maybe maybe a little bit big so it uh, you know I get in the ring at, at one one or just under 140 so it, it, mm. it's quite natural yeah, yeah. have you had have you been speaking to obviously MTK Jill's involved and, and yourself and are they, work, are they going to be working out a plan for you, Tasha, going forward? Obviously, when the COVID situation's over, have you got any nearer now to knowing when you might possibly get an opportunity to fight again, or is it still in the air? There isn't. So you can be the first people to know that I've had a call. So <gasps> I'm not going to say, <laughs> there, there's your punchline <laughs> right there. I'm not going to say yeah. you know, which side <laughs> of the Atlantic it's from or you know which promoter it's from. But I've had a call. That's all I can say at the oh, minute. Brilliant. Nothing's in in any way, shape, or form. There's a deal, or there's anything. There's yeah. just there's been a call, and that's that's, that's all that's I can true. say. About that. Because I, I generally, you know, you've you've worked so hard to get to what you you know how you've done it, and I, and I generally think that somewhere along the line, I think if you're more active, I think I think better fight when fighters are more more sharp when they're active, aren't they? So. If you're fighting regularly, I'm sure that, you know, obviously the skills that you've already got will be sharpened up and you will be a major, major force moving forward. Yeah, I think every bo every boxer wants to fight on all the shows. That's especially if you've come from, you know, a, a, a seasoned amateur background because you, you, you are fighting at tournaments every single month or every other month. So, but that when it's pro boxing, you know, there's a lot of, fighters that um, promoters have got it, that are contracted, that promoters have got to get in cards. And that's sometimes where it, it can be tough, if you, especially if you're not signed to a promoter or to, um, you know, platforms like Sky or The Zone or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, you've just got to, you just, like yeah. I say, just keep yourself in there, keep yourself, keep banging on doors, keep asking for phone calls, and then you'll get them. And you know, I've, I've put it out there that I, I wanted the call and I wanted the fight and, I, and I've got it. So I'm not complaining. Fantastic. Yeah, no, that's exciting because you uh, deserve a fight. And 
how difficult is it when you're seeing all of these uh, fights being announced and you're seeing the likes of all, you know, like Terry Harper's on, oh no, sorry, she's not, but Terry Harper was on the show after you. Um, you know, we've got um, Shannon Courtney, Rachel Ball, obviously there's quite a few others fighting. How frustrating is it for you when, you know, you're training so hard and you're just waiting for that call? Probably deep down, it, it is it is annoying and it is frustrating. But I don't I don't want to dampen anybody else. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I've trained with Rachel Barber and, and we've done spars and we've done sessions before, and you know, um, and I, I don't want to be at, like kind of a hater because they've got mm -hmm. a date and I haven't. I want them to do well. They're they're all paving their own way and their own story. And what a story Rachel Balls is, by the way, but. So I'm I'm happy for them. I don't want to be negative about it. I don't want to bring that negativity to myself. I'm I mm. am genuinely happy for them. I, I want I want them to do that. That's what this is. You know, kind of we're, we're at a a moment in 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 female boxing where we've got to ride the crest of the wave. And while people are wanting to put us on shows, and while the iron's hot, and while you know we've kind of knocked down that wall of oh, women's boxing isn't as good as men. That's kind of gone <laughs> now. So let's let's keep keep the momentum going, let's keep the fight, you know, let's keep, you know, Rachel Ball, Shannon Courtney, Ramla Ali, um, you know, Teddy Harper, Katie Taylor, let's keep all these names, household names, the mm -hmm. same way Anthony Fowler, uh, Bellum Smith, you know, Ted yeah. Cheeseman, the same way they are, let's keep that, like the women's, let's keep it going. So I don't, I don't hate on any woman who's got it. Yeah. I'd love to have one, but I don't hate on anyone who's got one. Yeah, no, definitely. I think women's boxing can be quite supportive. I think everyone kind of supports everyone. It's always quite nice to see. And um, while we're talking about women's boxing in general, though, you know, you've just mentioned all of these great fighters and including yourself in um, fight camp and all of these shows behind closed doors could be biased. But I think some of the women's fights were the best fights of the night, personally. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, and like you say, you've got all these big names, especially in British boxing, it's so big. You know, we've got so many world title holders. Why do you think the pay is still so different? I don't even know if I want to go into this. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it, it, it's hard to see why. I think mm. I've seen some things that Heather Hardy's been saying, and it's hard to disagree with what she says, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah you know, about women staying at one end of the table and people are moving up and moving up and moving. And to be fair, you know, you've got promoters saying that, oh, they don't generate as much revenue you have meant. That's that's probably because you're not doing the same job as you do with the yeah. men. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to disrespect anyone by saying that, but, you know, your job is to promote them. So if you promoted them as you would, you know, mm -hmm. anybody else, then there would be a, a cause for that. Or, yeah. you know... People will buy into what you're selling them, and you come as a when, when you know when Sky are selling a, a fight card, they're selling a package, and yeah. that should be the same with the stable. You know, mm -hmm. Joe doesn't treat selling my fight that's any different to selling Callum Johnson's or Callum Smith's, or you know, a fight's a fight, and the boxers are boxers. That doesn't matter if you're a male or female. You you you're still you're still an athlete. So mm -hmm. that's the way it should be seen instead of segregating it minute women and men's and, you know, just put it as the boxes and no mm -hmm. one will have any, and anyone that does have something to say will be in the minority. It's yeah. kind of an old way of thinking now and we've got past that. So let's, mm. you know, let's ride the crest. Let's get the, you know, Ch Chantel Camerons and Savannah Marshalls and everybody. Let's just get them on the same things as you do Josh Kelly, as you do Boati. That we've all yeah. come from the same place, you know. Kelly and Boati were in the uh, 2016 Olympic squad. So was Savannah. So was Chantal. So let's let let's promote yeah. them the same. Yeah. No, definitely, because it's frustrating, and sometimes I see an argument which annoys me: is the um, women only do two minute rounds, men do three minutes. The bit I don't like is you're still dedicating the same amount of time to that training. It's the behind the scenes bit. It's not yeah. just about that night, you know, it's really behind the scenes. It's you still got the same well, costs as the male fighters it, as well. That's exactly my point. So regardless of what the minutes are, like 
my petrol is still the same. Yeah. My gym fees are still the same. I pay Joe the same. I pay NTK the same. You know, um, I pay my sparring partners the same. You know, I pay the same board fees. I pay the same, you know, board med- medical, everything's yeah. the same. So regardless of what it is on the ninth, I still pay the same. I'm actually getting paid less because just because of, of me gender or me sex. Yeah doesn't make sense and for all them that are saying okay they only do two minutes okay let's have the conversation if we go to three minutes are you going to pay us the same because the answer will be no so yeah that's the point what Mm -hmm. what, and three minutes on my body is different to three minutes on a man's body yeah so like this is a thing i mean if, if you and um you and terry did manage to get together and get a rematch I mean, no one can tell me that that, that fight there wouldn't wouldn't fill a, uh, fill a, a good stadium. You know, probably Doncaster Dome. I, I definitely. I mean, it's something that I'd want to go to and watch. And and I think that's the thing you've got to you've got to keep pushing women's boxing into these sort of things and saying, look, you know, we can do this card with Tasha Terry on it and and get a few more of the ladies on it and let's see how we go. But if people aren't even trying to push the boundaries, then it'll always stay the same, in my opinion, Tasha. It's, so people need to push those boundaries and keep pushing women's boxing, like yourself, um, all the other ladies that are actually involved there, are fighting, and they are doing. So you know, I think it's a case now of, of, of like I say, promoters getting behind it. Um, I know Matchroom will put some cards on, but I think BT could do a little bit more from what I can see. Um, ITV, BBC, because the more women's boxing that's on TV, the more and more people are going to start jumping on it. Because to me, it's, it's so exciting. Yeah, and there isn't the depth in sport that there is in the men's. So the likelihood that you can go down one route and avoid a different champion is very small. Because, mm. and to be fair, nobody wants to do that. Everybody wants to fight everybody, and that's the great thing. Sometimes with the men's boxing, like I'll go the IBF route, someone else will go yeah. the WBC route, and the the two best might not ever fight each other because they've gone two different things, and they're that organisation, they're that organisation, and. But women's boxing isn't like that. Everybody wants to fight everyone because everyone wants to be undisputed. They've seen Clarissa do it. They've seen Katie do it. And now everyone's like, that is the target. You don't just want to be a one belt champ. You want to be the mm. champ of them all and say, I'm the actual only champ. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the thing with boxing. There's so many different federations. You don't always know who is the best in that weight division, especially like you say in the men's. You can be, you know, number one in the in the WBC and then number 10 in the yeah. WBA and number four in the IBO and you know it's 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 ma- it's a madness and yeah. you know yeah it is what it some, is I do have some questions that I'd like to put to you Tasha from a few people from Twitter and I was only four or five is that okay to put them through yeah yeah go ahead okay this is one is from a young amateur boxer from Walsall called Faye Marshall I don't know if you've heard of her Um, What she's put is, would you ask Tasha what her thoughts are for the Olympics route compared to the pro route, as I would have to do the Olympics, then pro. But because of the year it falls, I would have to wait until I'm 24 to go pro if I work towards the Olympics first. I think, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm any kind of child or anything, but age is, is not a factor. So don't worry about your age. Um, I think going the Olympic route just puts you on a good step. I think you go through things and you experience things that help you in pro boxing. It is totally different, especially for me, because the scoring was different. You know, obviously the rounds are different. So it is a little bit different. It is a little bit different. But I think for you being, unless you can get them big, you know, promoters like, you know, Matchroom or, you know, Frank Warren or, you know, whoever, MTK, whoever, that it's tough to pave her way as a woman, yeah. especially. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you've got that Olympic pedigree behind you, you're already on a platform where people know who you are. People want to see your development and your progress and where you go. So I think for me personally, the especially for women, the Olympic route will, will always can I, it put you like a little bit ahead of the, the path if that makes sense yeah. yeah thank you so much and the one from nicola hurricane hopewell 
She's a, a, a pro boxer. I don't know if you've probably seen her on Twitter. Yeah, yeah I do know her. Yeah. amazing person. She really is nice to talk to and everything. She's put, um, just give us a second, around, oh yeah. So the pandemic has affected her training anyway, so probably as it's affected everybody, hasn't it, really, the pandemic? And how you trained and how you've had to move things forward and... Yeah, so in the initial first lockdown in the March, obviously I had the dates for Harper in the April, then we got locked down in the March and the gyms were shut, the board had stopped ball boxing and it was an absolute nightmare. Um, obviously, as a pro boxer, you are a self-employed person. If you don't work, you don't get paid. So I, I, like, I was worrying then of when, when I would ever, obviously when I would ever get the opportunity to fight Harper again, but also mm -hmm. when I was actually going to get paid again, because that, that boxing is is what I do. I don't do any other work. Um, so yeah, that was struggled. Then we went back um, from the 1st of June, obviously, then I was fighting in the August and the schools were shut. So the baby had to come along with me to every single session. Um, we were shielding my nan. We didn't have a bubble at that time. We did, I didn't even think we was allowed one at that time. So I didn't have a bubble that I do now uh, with, me, with my nan. So she was coming to every session, you know, giving me water in between rounds and <laughs> she, I was legging it, chasing her down the track. I would say, right, Mila, oh. you run, mum, you go, and I'd be legging it. <laughs> and I think that's what made the Harper camp so special because yeah. she was so involved. She would never been that involved. And even though for her, she knows she, she gets I'm a boxer. She doesn't really get it, but she knows that I'm a boxer. But like, she, she was just like, she was just so involved and like yeah. happy to be there and, and and like I remember at, at the end of the fight he was asking me questions about how hard the camp was and I was holding back to you because I was remembering <laughs> like the things that like I'd been through with, with me little girl and like you know I was getting you know doing school work getting to bed like but at the same time like I said it was you don't really get that time. It sounds terrible, but I learned so much about my little girl yeah. in these lockdowns that I didn't know before because yeah. normally I'm rushing to get her to school, up dressed and fed school, then go and do my two sessions, pick her up, you know, do homework, play for a little bit, you know, bath, fed and bed. And that, that's, you, you, I'm constantly rushing to do them things. And then when we had 24 hours together, yeah, it was a struggle. <laughs> but I was like, wow, I actually didn't know this about my little girl, which was a little bit sad. Um, and we, we like, we're, we're closer now than we ever are. So it, it is, it is tough. She's still coming to sessions. Now she won't, she won't leave me alone. So now <laughs> she still comes to sessions, but even though, you know, she's still off school and whatever. She doesn't want to be, she doesn't want to be with anyone else. She wants to come with mum and she wants to, you know, she, Joe as she thinks she's Joe's number two. Joe's like, yeah. okay, <laughs> boss, what are we doing? And she's like, yes, Joe, we're doing this. And she's telling people, and she's yeah. counting people's reps when they're doing the work. And, you know, she's just enjoying, she's enjoying the ride as well and, and being with mum and being in that gym environment and, you know, seeing the lads, seeing the hard work, seeing the sweat. And she's like, Okay, I can, like this is this is what mummy's work is. This is mummy's work. Yeah. Normally, she just sees her on the telly, or she knows what to do. And's like mum, and punches something. Goes, Look, mum. <laughs> but now she can see, and she it, she's getting a yeah. grasp of actually what it is. Well, that just brings me on to the next question from Gail at Mad Boxing. She said, um, "Ask Tasha if her daughter has expressed any interest in boxing herself, and if so, how does she feel about that?" I mean. You, you know them little, like, in the play centres, they have that little swingy thing that they move through to go to the next oh, yeah. section. So when that swings, she'd be like, look, mum, and she'll go, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that, it just, that just makes me giggle, because, you know, some of the mums haven't got a clue who I am, but, like, we, we, I'll just look and I'll laugh, and I'll be like, yes, babe. So, but the thing is, like, that's the dog snoring, not me, obviously. <laughs> My, my parents encouraged me to be active. I wasn't allowed to just sit around the house and just, you know, play a game or whatever. I had to be out and doing stuff. And, you know, you know, Monday was football. 
Tuesday was this sport, running was Wednesday. They, they, you know what I mean? That every day I had something karate this day, you know. And every, I think at least three days a week, I was doing after school activities in, in school as well. Um, so I found my sport after doing a million and one. And I will, I will encourage her to do the same. So I I won't let her not be active. I will open a gateway, you know, to every sport, and God willing, she'll choose one that I like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will, yeah, I'll just do what my parents did and encourage her to be active because a sport will find you, believe it or not, and and that's what that's what will happen. She well, that's what I hope will happen. She might just be a little bookworm after after going off. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I just. I don't push it into anything. She she she'll decide for herself. And we went to obviously me me little sisters Nikita Paris, and we went to the World Cup um, in France. And um, it was the USA game. We went and we were with a few of my cousins and a few a few family. A bit, a, a, I had other sister and stuff. And so we we were sitting in the the match, and she was looking around. She was like. Wow, mummy, wow. I was like, do you like this? Maybe she had a little, you know, Nikita Paris top on, she was made up. And then we got there and they were banging the drums and she was, some fella gave her the stick to bang the drum and she was like, mum, can I do it? I was like, yeah, baby, you can do it. She was banging on the drum and she's like, <laughs> and then every time our Nikita got the ball, she was like, that's my auntie, that's my auntie. Oh. And I was just like, when we came, when we came out, like, obviously they lost, but when we came out, she was like, Mum, I I really love that game of football. I, I want to be a footballer like Auntie Kita. And I was like, oh, okay. And so, like, when we come home, she was like, Mum, let's play football, let's play football. So we were, like, kicking the ball to each other and she was chanting the little England song. She was like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> And that's what she was doing for weeks and weeks after. And it was just, like, she found her little sport, you know what I mean? And I did find her, um, the Kingsley... Um, under fives, like it's just a little kickabout team that they can go and, and learn until they actually develop into a team. So we found that, and she loves going to that. So, to, to, to be honest, she probably enjoys football more than she ever will boxing. <laughs> um, and she, but it's from it's from moments like that though that sparks something. And I was happy that it was football because obviously I like football, but you know, <laughs> she might fall out of love with it and find something else. But I don't know. It's strange because football. when you look at um, like. Chris Eubank Jr. There's uh, young Campbell Hatton now that he's obviously starting on his pro career. Um, there's a lot of them that have, you know, the sons and, and things that have come into boxing now, isn't there? Because the father's done it. And I think there's something in the, the genetics and and just how it is. I think it's just there, isn't it? You know, it's in yeah. them. I and, also think uh, that you know, if you... Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. What was she saying? Yeah. No, you're okay. Tasha. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was just... I was just... I think sometimes if you if you follow oh we can see you now <laughs> if you follow in your parents' footsteps it can be a little complicated. Like yeah, it can, I think there's a lot it of puts a little bit of added that? pressure like Naz's son like like you say Hatton's son you know Eubank Junior Ben yeah. and I think you've got like you've got a little bit of a um, like a bit of a added pressure because your parent was so good mm. so you 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 carry in your oh. And then yeah. you're carrying your parents, and then you can, you know, and yeah. you, you, like you say, I'm trying to, you know, build my own path, and and that's brilliant. But sometimes you will always just be stuck with your name. Yeah, yeah it's like everyone knows in boxing who you bank is. Everybody knows yeah. in boxing who Ben is. Everybody knows who Hatton is. Everybody knows who Nas is. So if you know, if, if you're one of their offspring, unfortunately, you are going to always be judged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think as well, at times, it can be hard for the, you know, if you're like the parent and you've been through that and you've seen, you know, been through the ups and downs of like boxing, you know how tough it is mentally, you know, financially. It's not always what then you might want for your kid. You might want them to maybe go a different path as well. Oh, right. Anything that doesn't have to make weight. I have to stop yeah. <laughs> diet food and I'm retired and I'm not on the yeah. diet. I'll be fuming. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Um, Tasha, it's been great. Wayne, did you have any other questions? Just one more, really. Um, 
just one more, and it's from um, some, a young amateur that I'm sure Tasha knows very, very well. Uh, Rhiannon? Yeah. Rhiannon? Um, she asks just this question. She says, what was it like training at the Olympics? I mean, going to the qualifier was the most craziest time ever. I don't, you know, there was more participants than ever before, more countries involved than ever before, because it was the one, we had one qualifier to qualify. And there was so much pressure that, and because there was only one qualifier, I don't think everybody expected us to qualify. Um, we went there with the attitude that, you know, we were told at first it was the top eight will qualify and then they'll choose like wild cards. And then we got there and they're like, actually, they're doing it in regions. So Europe, they're like two from Europe. There'll be three from Europe. There'll be this from this many. There'll be this from this. So I was like, oh, my God, because in my division, there was a lot of European yeah. champions. Obviously, I had Ocha Gave, there was Katie Taylor, there was, um, oh, I can't even remember, there was the um, Norwegian, Ingrid Egner, there was, you know, a, another good uh, Polish, um, there was just loads of good, uh, France, there was, um, I can't even think of a name. <laughs> Yeah, there was just all the all like the champions that had moved up weights and gone down weights and whatever was all European. So I was like, I knew I was top eight in the world, but I didn't know that if I was top three European. So then to go there and qualify and then, you know, everyone at that time then was qualified for the Olympics. We'd qualified the whole team. I think it was only us and Russia that had done that. And when you're all there, again, like Joe's, and you're training towards a date and you've all got that date and you're pulling each other through sessions and you're working hard. It, it, it's hard to put into words because there's nothing else to, to um, okay. compare it to. And it was just an unbelievable moment to walk out and curtains go back and see all the biggest competition in amateur, in your amateur career, being your home in your own country and have, you know, everybody actually cheering for you instead of booing you when you go abroad. <laughs> it, was yeah. just something, it was just something else and you know your family could be there, everyone was there and it was just it was it was just dead special, really special. Yeah. Just one more. Are you uh, sparring with Amy Timberland for her fight? That's um in February. Are you doing a little bit of sparring with Amy here and there or yeah, yeah, I have been. Um obviously, you know, as I say, women's boxing the, the depth is is very and the, the the pool is very small and it's even smaller if you're looking for South Post Bar and <laughs> I'm just half ha, ha, like just happen to be very local and a South Post so um, I don't know I don't I, I think there's very few of us in the country um, so yeah it, we we've been doing some um, and we'll probably get some more in before it before if I day but. You know, it's it's always it's always good to have sparring anyway for me. Right hand is it all day, every day. Um and yeah, it's it's it, it, I, I do train a, a lot with Amy. I train with her for the last camp and I'll probably do more with her this camp. Well, I can't thank you enough for the time you give me, Tasha. It's been absolutely amazing, you know, to have the opportunity to speak to you as well. So um all I can ever do is, is wish you all, all the best this year. Um Cheers. I'll continue to keep supporting. Um and let's just hope that uh, this year you get what you deserve. And I think that's a belt around your waist. I really do. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your time. And uh, yeah, hopefully this call pulls off and uh, you've got a fight date soon. Keeping my fingers crossed. All right. Can, and can I just say to, you know, I've been saying this to all all the media outlets and, and everyone who supports us, you know, thank you, because that's what we need. We need to keep breaking down these barriers. We need to keep the, you know, the, the, the ride on this crest of a wave and, Every, everything that's you know positive supportive and we, we need to keep that going so thank you for having us and, and thank you for giving us the platform on me the platform oh no thank you thanks for your time yeah. and ho hopefully speak to you soon yeah see you soon thank you bye see you later thank you. thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please click like now and subscribe you can also follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. Thank you. Bye.